The U.S. government has agreed to pay roughly $2 billion to Pfizer and BioNTech to secure coronavirus vaccines when it does become available. The Health and Human Services Department is saying the agreement allows the U.S. to secure 100 million doses of the coronavirus vaccine with an additional 500 million doses available if needed. This, of course, comes as countries around the world race to find a cure. Let's bring in Dr. Robin Gershon. She is a clinical professor of epidemiology at NYU School of Global Public Health. Dr. Gershon, it's always good to get uh, to have you join us on the show. Uh, let me just get your uh, thoughts on this announcement today. There's a lot of concern, even, even as we see this race for a vaccine, about the availability of these vaccines on the other end. Um, how far does that move today uh, go and maybe giving you some confidence that there will in fact be uh, enough to scale up here in the U.S.? Yes, this is really great news. I was very excited to see it, especially the part about 500 million extra doses, because you realize 100 million doses is clearly not enough. We have about 80 million elderly people in this country, about 130 million with a chronic disease, lots of healthcare workers, one of the top five industries in the US. So we have a lot of people who should be up front and center for getting this vaccine first. Now, the good news is that of the 100 or more companies that started this race, we have about two dozen who are entering a very good spot for all of us, with these four at the top of the list. The Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, AstraZeneca, and the Chinese vaccine company, Calcino. All of them are entering the same stage at the same time. They're about to start much larger clinical trials of 10,000, 30,000. This will give us hope that we will have at least one of them by the end of the fall or maybe early winter. So this is great news for us. When you looked at the testimony of the drug makers yesterday, there's certainly a lot of concerns about uh, supply constraints. You know, in, in the face of so many different countries who are racing to develop this vaccine, how real are those concerns right now? And where do you think the U.S. is positioned in all of this? Well, typically we are very well positioned because we have a long history, of course, of making vaccines. But a problem for me that I've been concerned about and several of my colleagues is how will we roll this out? We don't have a lot of confidence in our ability, for instance, in the testing, the tracing, testing, that sort of thing. This is a huge undertaking where we have to reach every corner of the US and we need to do it in a timely way. I'm a little concerned about the two vaccine strategy that some of them are proposing like Moderna, because it's hard enough to get people to take one vaccine. These are, of course, needle vaccines. And we know that about 50% of the US right now says that they will take the vaccine. About 25% say absolutely not, and 25% are on the fence. We need about 70% to take it in order to have herd immunity. So it's the rollout that I'm concerned about. Without that vaccine, we've certainly seen a lot of states across the country struggle to try and get their uh, coronavirus cases under control. And we did get a shift, it seemed, yesterday um, at the White House in, in tone. The president coming out and saying, or at least acknowledging that things will get worse before they get better. And also he talked about the importance of having and wearing masks. How important is that shift in tone coming from the very top, um, especially given just how fragmented the response to the virus has been up until now? Clearly, this is very important. Not having this firm, uh, unified message coming into the American people has been very problematic, as we know. This was a, a great step forward. I'm not sure exactly where it came from. Perhaps some of his advisors have been saying, look, we have more than 30 states with increases right now. We have Texas, parts of Texas that are seeing uh, thousands of deaths uh, and cases every single day. We're having shortages, shortages of hospital space. Uh, the reality is hitting all of us. And I think it's even coming to the fore for President Trump. So this is a very good sign that he's getting on board with the public health message. I certainly hope that, that uh, the message stays consistent. Robin Gershon, a clinical professor of epidemiology at NYU School of Global Public Health. Great to have you on today. Same here. Bye-bye.